city planning in Philadelphia had always been done in a sort of ad hoc way, except for William Penn, who did it right the first time, right? But um, it had always been done in this very ad hoc way. There had not really been a sort of centralized city function for planning. There had been a lot of discussion about the need for that. Why? Because if we want to have a city that can have uh, parks, a transportation system, investment in an urban core, new you know, high-rises, all these kind of things, the feeling is it, it shouldn't be done or couldn't be done piecemeal. We needed to have some sort of big plan. And that was going to take one or more people uh, who could actually come in with the vision of what that would look like. He was an intellectual omnivore. He was interested in planning. He was interested in ecology. He was interested in transportation and in housing. And he brought all of those interests back with him to Philadelphia. He got a position with the uh, very newly created, um, what would become the City Planning Commission, a very newly created planning body. And he was put to work on an exhibit, which began as a conversation among a few uh, kind of starry-eyed planners, particularly uh, Oscar Stonerov, who had done some work in the 1939 uh, New York uh, World's Fair, uh, Lou Kahn, who was emerging as an architectural powerhouse in the city, um, and Bacon was brought in as part of this thought collective to talk about, well, what kind of an exhibit could we put forward to get Philadelphians thinking and talking about what their city could look like in the future. And that gives, um, that's the genesis of the Better Philadelphia exhibition, which was mounted in 1947. Uh, it took place in, um, they put it up in two floors of the Gimbel's department store in 8th and Market Street. And it ran for about two months, but it drew almost 400,000 people in.